The Cape Elizabeth School Department School Board meeting is called to order June 10th, 1997 at 7.30. Could we all stand and have the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My pleasure to introduce to the audience and to the audience at home, the new chair of the Cape Elizabeth School Board, Charles Greer. And this is his second term as chair, so we have high expectations, right? Thank you. <laughs> uh, before we get on with our meeting, uh, we have a little unfinished business. And if Beth could join me, please. Beth, in recognition of two very, very effective years as our board chair, um, we don't want you to, even though you're going to stay on the board with us for another two years, we still would like to honor your, years, your two years of service on the board. You've been a very effective chairman. You've definitely been a lightning rod for many, many, <laughs> many things that have gone on in the last two years. And hopefully, my taking your place will diffuse that. <laughs> thank you, Charlie. That was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Great. I'll put it right out of my screen for you. Thank you. First agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Um, I have two uh, under new business item. It should be E F. It will be item F. Is a computer lease. And under communications, we have with us both Senator Jane Amaro and Representative Jean Guinea Marvin who will give a presentation and a legislative update. Is there any other? Yes, and I have two additions under new business. I have two teacher resignations. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, we do need to add an executive session for negotiations. The next is approval of the May 1997 school board minutes. The first is the May 13th regular meeting. Are there any adjustments or corrections? Seeing none, they stand. The next was a May 20th, 1997 special meeting, which was the approval of an interim principal at the high school and a social studies teacher at the high school. Assistant, interim assistant principal, I'm sorry. And the next was a May 27, 1997 special meeting for the purpose of two hearings on student matters. Any adjustments to those? Seeing none, they stand. Uh, next will be comments by our high school school representative. Do we have a high school representative here? Okay. Do we have a middle school representative? Hi. Um, the eighth, seventh and eighth grade just had their last dance and that went well. We didn't have any behavior problems. Everybody had a lot of fun. And the social went um, well as also and they had a karaoke machine. Um, also, the eighth grade recognition night is Monday, June 16th at 7 p.m. in the middle school cafetorium. There will be a reception afterwards. Um, the middle school spirit week was a lot of fun. Lots of people dressed up, and um, we had lots of winners instead of just two this year because we couldn't decide. 
and everyone's excited for beach day and as you know it's been changed the last day of school and um the grades are closing friday so we have a lot of tests and stuff any questions okay does this your last meeting before us yep do you know who's going to be your replacement next year um i don't because we don't do that through the freshman class we do it through the high school okay um we want to thank you for coming before us and giving us very updated reports on what's happening in the middle school and we thank you thank you the next is communications um, I would like to start with announcing our two subcommittees which at our organizational meeting were um, decided last night our finance subcommittee chair will be Keith Weatherall and you will be hearing from him later the other two members of that committee are are Beth and John. Our policy subcommittee will be chaired by George and Wessel, and the other two members will be Ann and Kevin. And I thank them ahead of time for their year of service ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to recognize a, the retirement of Mary Ann Brown, who has been an administrative assistant at Pond Co and um, she will be re retiring as of August 1st. I think all of us who've had children that have gone through that, gone through the system from kindergarten on have, have Im been impacted and helped by Mary. And I think she has served Ponco very, very well. Um, I would also like to report on having attended the graduation ceremony, ceremony at the Portland Arts and Technology High School on May 29th. Um, we had several students who were completing two-year programs. Some of them are seniors, so they may be going back for a third year. Um, I did want to recognize a couple who received honor recognition. Uh, one was Joseph Barker in auto mechanics. One was Julie, Jillian Dick, Diekman in Fast Foods, and the other was um, Keely Mallet in uh, Communication Design. They received, they graduated with honors. And on June 5th, I attended the PAS Arts and Technology High School Advisory <coughs> Committee, and it was our last meeting for the year. Um, and the election of the new chair and co-chair and the new chair for the past advisory committee will be David Mustrafasis from Falmouth and the assistant chair will be the superintendent from, from Yarmouth, Ken Murphy. Are there any other communication? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, on May, I believe it was May 20th, uh, I, I spent the day at the high school uh, shadowing a ninth grade student and attended all of her classes and, uh, and had lunch with a group of ninth graders and so forth, and I, and I really enjoyed it, and I had a, I had a great day. Uh, uh, very impressed with uh, what went on during the classes, uh, great teaching and, and great learning going on with, uh, with the students. Uh, very impressed with the, the students at uh, passing time and so forth. Uh, I, I used the word uh, civil when I when I uh, described it to somebody. Uh, uh, I thought it was terrific, and, uh, and uh, I hope the rest of the board members do get contacted and get your way, you know, into the schools to, to do that shadowing. It was it was just a great day. Uh, secondly, I just want to congratulate all of the music department and uh, drama department productions over the last couple of weeks. Uh, tremendous concerts in the middle school, the high school, as well as the uh, production of, of Once Upon an Actress. It was, it was great fun. It was great to, to, to see. Thanks. And at this time, I would like to ask Senator Ann Moreau and Representative Ian Marvin to come forward. Good evening. I bring you greetings from Augusta. I was hoping to bring you greetings from Cape Elizabeth, but we're not quite done with our work yet. We're hoping to be done um, this coming week from Friday. Um, we are out this week, but we will be back next week, um, continuing to work on some of the bond issues, cigarette tax, and 
um, a few other loose ends that we can't see, quite seem to settle on, but hopefully by next Friday we will be straightened all around. Um, tonight I'm very pleased to recognize some people in Cape Elizabeth for doing something very special. Um, this has to do with the inhalation of toxic vapors. Now many of you know that um, Kevin Sweeney um, spearheaded a group last fall, I guess he called me and started talking to me about this. I had never heard of this practice and he and Paul Gaspar, who's our community liaison officer, um, talked to me at great length about it and made me aware of the problem and I went to a Cape Coalition meeting and they also um, talked about the importance of it. And through Kevin's diligence and hard work, um, I introduced a piece of legislation that made it a crime in the state of Maine because up till now, even if a police officer caught a child doing that, there was nothing that they could do. Um, it wasn't against the law um, to inhale gasoline or glue or paint or anything else. And it's a potentially deadly thing. And many, many um, children across the United States every year die from this practice. And so Kevin and I put together um, a piece of legislation. We brought it forward, had some language problems. We worked and worked with it. We finally got it worked out through the help of a DA and um, eventually it passed unanimous out of committee, which usually means clean sailing right from there. So we were very excited about that. Of course, in the legislature, nothing's over till it's over. <laughs> and um, it went from the House of the Senate to the House of the Senate under the hammer each time, which means we didn't even vote. It was a unanimous consent. And upon enactment, someone stood up and objected, which never happens, but <laughs> it happened. And it was a libertarian who believed that um, adults should have the right to huff if they want to, that it's fine to make it illegal for children, but not for adults. And my first instinct was to say, well, okay, fine. But then I said, no, we're not going to let him bully us. No, no, no. So um, we had a little floor fight, and it passed handily. And uh, that piece of law has been signed by the governor at this point. But tonight I have, um, unfortunately, something that's a little bit tardy because um, I've not been in town on a, a Tuesday night for one of your meetings since March when um, this actually happened. And what this was is... Um, that the legislature recognized National Inhalation and Poison Awareness Week back in March um, through Kevin's efforts. And so I would just like to read this sentiment and present it to him in a small token of thanks for all his hard work. And what it says is, State of Maine, be it known that all we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing the week of March 16, 1997 as National Inhalation and Poisons Awareness Week to emphasize the dangers associated with inhalant abuse the practice of inhaling toxic vapors for mind-altering effects. Inhaling abuse can cause death, permanent brain damage, psychosis, loss of memory, hearing, and sight, and can cause significant damage to the heart, lungs, kidney, liver, and bone marrow. Nearly one out of five young people in grades 6 through 12 in our state have abused inhalants at least once, and the abuse is expected to continue. We encourage all citizens to become involved in increasing awareness of this silent epidemic and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the legislature and the people of the state of Maine. So thank you very much, Kevin. <laughs> and also to Paul and um, the members of the Cape Coalition who um, all worked hard to make this possible. And with that, we'll hand it over to Senator Amro, and I'll be here for questions if you have any. It's great to be back in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, and I think uh, the legislative session was a very successful one as far as our community is concerned. Uh, I was really pleased that uh, when general purpose aid education uh, was distributed, we were able to provide for a cushion, as we had hoped, uh, so that the uh, uh, resulting loss of state funds to this community would not have the major effect that uh, we had initially thought when you got the original printouts back in January or February. So from that point of uh, view, I think it was quite a successful session. In fact, education fared well in this session. Uh, both political parties and the governor made education the state's top priority. Uh, learning results uh, did pass the legislature uh, last week with flying colors, very little debate. The homework had been done this time. Uh, uh, people seemed to better understand what it was all about. Uh, and uh, so I'm very optimistic that uh, we're on the right road there of trying to set high academic standards uh, for all children in the state. 
Uh, and uh, we're very hopeful that this is just the beginning of a process that will be ongoing and continuing. Uh, the other news that I wanted to make you aware of uh, has to do with a study committee that had a new, yet a new study group that has been set up to look at the school funding formula. There was a great sense of outrage uh, in some of the, the communities in the Bangor and area in north of Bangor about the present school funding formula and uh, they had hoped to scrap the existing formula and come up with a totally new one during this legislative session. Uh, what did happen was that the State Board of Education has been given the assignment of looking at just pieces of the school funding formula, in particular how we can fund the essential programs and essential services for all children across the state. So it's a mo more focused study. Uh, and also they will be examining uh, the effect of including income and cost of living into the formula as well. So those are the, the two priorities that the State Board of Education will be looking at. Uh, with that, I think those, those are the key issues uh, that were addressed during this legislative session, at, at least as far as they affect education. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now. I also have a presentation I want to make tonight as well. I would just like to thank you for your efforts because it sure did help our system and I'm sure helped many other right. systems. It we're did. going to lose substantial amounts of funding. Right. Uh, I, I think it's a good, it's good public policy to make sure that no one school district takes a huge hit in any given year. Uh, so I felt very comfortable with the policy and was especially pleased that it helped Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I also want to congratulate the new chairman, Charlie Greer. Uh, it's a real important position. I also want to congratulate the newly elected and re-elected uh, members of the school board and look forward to working with all of you uh, over the next, uh, next year. With that, I, last time I was here, uh, it was to make a presentation to uh, our state champion soccer teams. Uh, and we found out at that meeting uh, that it wasn't only the students who should be recognized. As always, if you have a great uh, athletic team, that means, that means that there's a great coach behind it. So I'd like to ask Andy Stroud if he'd pr please come forward. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Andrew Strout of Cape Elizabeth High School, who has been named New England Boys Soccer Coach of the Year for the second consecutive year. His soccer team members have been the state Class A champions for four out of the past five years. We extend our congratulations to him, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Thank you very much, Andrew. Wow. Um, obviously, thank you very much, and, and it is certainly a, a pleasure to work with all the, the fine young men and women of this community, and thanks for the board to support the, all the programs that we have now. So thank you very much. I just want to add, after this past weekend of successes that Cape Elizabeth has had on four different fronts of bringing home four new state titles, it's getting a little embarrassing up in Augusta. <laughs> <laughs> People keep coming to me and saying, you must have one of the largest high schools in the whole state. And I said, no, we have a very average high school as far as numbers go, but anything but average as far as uh, uh, achievement. So we should be very proud and we'll be coming back to you to honor those successful teams from this past weekend as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, both of you. Any questions of either one of them? Next, we go on to the superintendent's report. Uh, the first item is a report on the science curriculum, which Tom Eismeyer is going to do. Uh, good evening. The um, core or the steering committee for the uh, science curriculum project met, met against this morning. I think you had in your packets either last month or Mary sent to you an update on our plan. 
we, we've looked at the learning results and the framework for math and science. And uh, Scott has in his hands the purchase order to get the FOSS equipment. In the meantime, um, the seventh and eighth grade science teachers met to um, fill that last piece. And they are going to use the Prentice Hall approach of having modular units in selected areas that they're going to work in and use the, well, the modular unit is actually part of a textbook and back that up with uh, regular lab experiences. So by the end of the summer, I think, and we talked about last month, having a K through eight science curriculum course of study, and I think that will be a reality. The second part is the, uh, on the Monday and Tuesday after school closes, I think that's the 23rd and 24th, there'll be professional development in service training on this material um, for the FOSS material K through six. And the seventh and eighth grade teachers will come and make a final decision on the units they want to teach in consultation with the high school teachers and spend time um, organizing their material for the fall. So um, that's a lot of work in a short time. And I give a lot of credit to uh, the steering committee, as we call ourselves, Ingrid and Kerry and Doug, Cynthia Curry, and uh, Steve Price. They've done a lot of work. Any questions? Tom, the um, training that comes the two days after school, is that for all the teachers? Yes, we talked about that this morning. The original plan before this blossomed into uh, an entire curriculum was to have just the people who did the training with the learning center. But uh, since we're all going to be doing it, it'll be, it'll be doing it in the fall. It's open to all teachers. In addition, um, the learning center can continue staff development and uh, individual professional work all during the year. They're very strong on training for these kits that we're going to buy. You say it's open to all teachers, but does that not mean it's required of all teachers? After school ends, it's tough. Um, we, we, we chose that week. The sense of the group was if, if there's one good week, that would be the week to do it. So the majority of the people can do it then. And with the school uh, finding other resources at the learning center and with the FOSS rep coming back, professional development will be available to every teacher teaching science. But the expectation is that every teacher will be teaching this right. program. Right. Scary thought, but we've got to do it sometime. Yeah. I just want to say thank you again to you for leading it and all the teachers who've spent so much time um, making this happen. It, it truly um, is a pleasure to see a curriculum come together um, in such a short time and um, from you know, very dedicated people who are actually going to be teaching the curriculum. It's not coming from outside, so I would assume that would mean there'd be a lot of ownership of this and it'll be an effective curriculum. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the, uh, the steering committee has, <coughs> has put in some time, but I think they're, they're representative of all the work that's gone into it. The people who came to the trainings really worked hard uh, to match it up to the curriculum standards and fielded some tough questions from their colleagues about you know, what's going on, how much time we have to do it. But every time uh, we reach a little crisis point, we seem to get through it, so good. Sure. I, just, I just think this is another example of real effective change that comes about when staff, uh, staff initiate it with <laughs> administrative support. And, our, and that's how we're really going to get change in the system. I think it came through in, in our computer technology plan. I think it came through in our research strand. And, and to some degree in our reading program and, and really effectively in, our, in this science curriculum. And if I could just editorialize for a second, I think the context is really important with the learning results almost signed into law when we started doing this and the main math and science framework for science and math. It was just a good timing. We weren't working alone. We were working with other people around the state. So t timing is critical, but the staff motivation and willingness to put in the hours was really important. Shall I stay here for IASA? You should stay. <laughs> the next topic is the report on the IASA, which is Approving American Schools Act. Right. Um, the rules changed a little bit for the, uh, the federally funded uh, money, the federally funded programs last year. In order to get our funds, we had to have a consolidated plan. And we, as a group, met last year, and Connie uh, drafted goals after getting input from the group in the following areas, student-centered learning, aligned curriculum instruction, shared vision, climate supportive of change, connected professional development, coordinated uh, people, programs, and resources. Out of those general um, areas of self-assessment which are required to get the funding, we chose specific goals in systemic planning, staff development, reading comprehension, and research strands, and the integrated curriculum and, and assessment. 
Today, uh, representatives of groups uh, representing the school and the community, two students, I really want to thank them for coming. I think they were a little, well, they, they did well. They did extremely well because it's all new to them. We met again today to review the progress we had made in meeting these goals. One thing about a consolidated plan, it gets you to look at the big picture. So we went through uh, the work we had done, we're continuing to do with planning, staff development, and so on. And as Charlie said, we've done a lot in the past year. The strong message I got from the group was that once in a while we should take time to acknowledge the progress we've made. We seem to suffer from the syndrome of going, going, going without taking the chance, uh, the time to stop and say good work to people. And the mission and vision statement, which we worked so hard on for, well, before I came, but last year too, uh, came up as a, a good good map for us, and the the committee that formed that met today would like to publicize that and use it more, uh, and match it up with our goals again. So it was a very positive meeting, and I want to thank the people for coming. And I'm glad to hear such uh, positive comments from the board because a lot of things have happened in the past year. Really pleased with. It. Okay, thank that's you. all. Yeah, yes. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Next item is a report on outdoor experiences for the middle school and we've had a committee that's been meeting to discuss outdoor experiences and some possible options. Uh, Ann or George, one of you going to report? Oh, I'd be, I'd be happy to. Um, at, the, at one of our budget workshops in March, I can't remember the exact date, um, the, the board had a consensus to leave the money in the budget for Chewankee but in light of um, issues raised, different issues raised by different board members, for some it was proximity to um, Maine Yankee, you know, for others it was, um, you know, place in the curriculum. For others, I think one board member who's now off wanted to uh, look at expanding arts experiences. Um, there was a direction to go, to go back through the health and guidance curriculum, K-12 curriculum committee, to just look at what other options there are out there. There was never at that point the intention of canceling Chiwanki. It was merely to try to um, get down on paper what the goals of the Chiwanki program were, um, see if it's meeting all our needs and the needs of, of uh, the teachers and the kids in the building and to see what the range of providers were that were out there. That's, this is a program that's been in existence for, I think, exactly 10 years, and that does actually seem like a pretty logical time to, to relook, relook at a program. Um, we, we did pull from the Health and Guidance um, Curriculum Committee, mostly people from the middle school, obviously. Nancy Hutton was at a couple of the meetings, Joe Doan from the sixth grade, uh, Rick Madden and Lyle Kramer from Guidance, Julie Salikas, and Andy Strout, Sue Weather became um, to one meeting, and Beth and I were the school board reps. And we sat down and just brainstormed, you know, what the goals were of an outdoor experience program. It was very much the consensus of the entire group that having some kind of outdoor experience with team building um, was a very important component of the middle school curriculum and it was never the intent not to have such an experience. There was a lot of discussion about um, whether having it in the spring in the sixth grade was optimum. I think again the consensus of the group was it would be better if, if such a program, no matter what grade level it was at, would be better off in the fall um, when there could be, you know, building on that experience through the curriculum through the rest of the year. Um, there was uh, extended conversation about um, the commitment of the faculty because we had done a curriculum audit, um, K-12 and Chwanki was not um, mentioned by the teachers, not just the health and guidance, but the teachers in general at the middle school as a component of the program. So we had a discussion about that. There was a feeling that, you know, people do think it's a valuable experience. There's, again, there's no question about that, but that um, it's, it's a difficult commitment for a lot of teachers, and there was some concern that not all the sixth grade teachers were going um, with the students. There was concern that our group is so large now that Chiwanki can't accommodate uh, the whole sixth grade at the same time, and whether that diluted the experience. So 
with all those parameters, the, you know, the good and, you know, the, the things we might like to improve, um, we just sat down and, and started talking about what alternatives might look like, and we were talking about perhaps having a four-year uh, program where starting with just a one-day experience on campus in um, fifth grade, building to a two- or three-day experience maybe in the fall in sixth grade with a follow-up in the middle of the winter, one or two days, and, and a, like a volunteer day in the spring. And we were basically just focusing on, on looking at, at that kind of framework for now because it's a lot to do. Four grades is a lot, and, and the kids who have been through the current Chewanke experience will be in seventh and eighth grade, um, so we didn't think they were as big a priority. Um, so our hope was to come to come back with a list of providers, including Chewanke, um, who, who certainly is very interested in continuing working with us, to do presentations about programs that might meet our needs. I'd like to just stress that the whole point was just to get the full range of options available to us in terms of outdoor experiences. Not to not have one, not to cancel, cancel Chewanke, but just to see what the range of options were. Um, we had a meeting last week um, that frankly I don't think went very well. Um, I had to leave early, but we never did get to the discussion of um, what providers we might like to have present to us. And uh, the, there were a lot of parents there, um, very supportive of Chewanke, um, which is great, um, but we never got to the point where we could actually you know, have a, a well-rounded discussion about what providers we should come back and, and present to us. Um, I did have to leave that meeting early, so I can't really, <laughs> um, you know, say exactly how it ended up, only that Beth, as uh, the outgoing school board chair, had asked the parents who were there to please help us in this process um, to look at acceptable ex experiences that we might consider. Um, so at this point, you know, I don't know if we <laughs> want to have a discussion about it. I know a lot of, a lot of parents are here. I guess I would, I would just like to say as a board member that um, I've been a little disappointed in, in this process because I don't think we're really modeling um, very good behavior for our kids. Um, as a committee, we were in the process of just gathering a whole range of information um, in order to have public presentations so that everybody could give their input. And I feel like the process got stopped at a point of just saying we have to retain what we have without being willing to look, look at the whole range and see if the experience the way it currently is is really meeting our needs. Maybe it is. I mean, maybe given all the alternatives, it is. But um, I, I'm not sure that we actually know that, and enough questions were raised about the timing and splitting up the grade that I, I still think it was worthwhile to, to look at it. And I do think, above all, that if we're going to have a program like this, it has to be tied to the curriculum. And I'm extremely concerned when we have a, basically a pull-out program that's very good when you look at it in a vacuum. Um, but it's not tied um, to the curriculum in that grade, it's not followed up. And I guess my, my basic feeling is, if we're gonna continue this program, I think I'd like to see the parents get concerned enough about doing things in a vacuum that we make sure that we have a clear statement of what the point of the program is and see it, see it really tied to the teachers who the kids are with, um, have, activities that happen before we go and activities that we go that that happen after and that build on that experience because um, right now I don't think that's happening so at the very least I think that's what we should be looking for George you had a proposal I believe that you were yeah, I, I, I think that um, I, I think that there were all very good intentions around Chewanke certainly um, and uh, represented exactly what happened at the budget hearing. Um, the money was left in uh, and was generally targeted for Chewanke. Um, there was at that time also an expectation uh, that alternatives would be explored. I think that 
Um, the, other, the other part of it was that uh, the Chwanki would be evaluated. And, and my sense is that in the process of evaluating the program, um, emotions have run very high. Um, misinformation and speculation has in, in some ways uh, had a negative impact. And um, I guess my proposal is that we just do a timeout right now. Um, I, I think Ann talks about modeling good behavior. I think we need to model good behavior. We need to be problem solving in our approach and we need to get a little bit more refocused. My proposal, and, and from this perspective of one board member, uh, Chiwanki needs really a programmatic evaluation that should be done by uh, uh, educators um, and a look at the administrative issues by um, our administrators. Um, I think then input from other constituencies, and I would consider the school board one of those constituencies, um, could be considered. Input from parents could be considered. Um, my recommendation is that we um, first pay the deposit and secure our place in Chiwanki, uh, which needs to be done to alleviate a lot of anxiety that people have. And then we need to perhaps commission a short-term task force. And I know that that was sort of the intent. Somehow um, the intent and the communication um, perhaps just didn't go together. So be right up front and say we are going to commission a short-term task force of key educators who play a role, um, of the administrators, certainly Nancy Hutton, to evaluate Chiwanki and the other alternatives. The, the bottom line is that we want the best experience for the children. Um, if there are things that we can do to enhance Chiwanki, then so be it. If there are alternatives that do a better job than Chiwanki, then so be it. But it has to be done on the basis of the programmatic value of this outdoor experience. And, um, and then from that task team, I think that we then should be responsible to act on their recommendations. So I think it's just time out, a couple steps back, get refocused, um, pay the Chiwanki deposit, get that secured. Um, at this point in time, we are not far enough down the road, I don't believe, to say that there is going to be an alternative or that Chiwanki is not going to happen next year. So we need to move ahead, secure our place, uh, do the programmatic evaluation, and come out with what is going to be the best experience, the best programmatic value for the, for the students. Um, that's my recommendation. Anyone else on the board would like to respond? I'd like to ask Nancy, what is the date for the deadline for the reservation? Do we have time to get that submitted? Um, I believe we do. We um, attempted to make contact with them today to ask that very question, and they were all out at a training meeting, so no one was there. So we do have a call in for them um, tomorrow morning, first thing when they return. And we do, in March, we received a contract request from them, them requesting us to sign up with the deposit and securing our May dates. Um, although we did not send the deposit in, we do have a long history with the Chiwanki Foundation, and we believe that um, we still have time to do that. I would like to state, though, that I think it's the task force is an excellent idea. I look forward to working on that um, and working with parents and with school board members and other interested people. I think it would be good to have perhaps some students who have gone, either seventh and eighth graders or high school students on that as well as they look at that because they are the ones who can speak um, most clearly about what the long-lasting lessons were from Chiwanki that they still recall, not just the fun, but the lessons that they learned. Um, however, the idea of going in the fall is difficult. Um, that is not a date we've used in the past. I need to be real honest and say I think we're still a, probably a school year away from getting a fall date for them, although Anne is correct in that um, group that met, and I was only able to make one of the meetings, but we did talk about doing something at the beginning of the year with different grade levels. I do feel that if we secure a place at Chiwanki for next year, we would be securing a place in May. Yeah, it's my understanding there's a waiting list for fall slots. It, it is very difficult to get in the fall. Um, we would have to get on a waiting list. Um, we do have some leverage in that with our long-term working relationship with them, and um, we will use all of those charms and skills that we have to see what we can do. But I know, I know we will not be able to go in the fall of 1997. George. Nancy, just, just to make clear what my recommendation is, my recommendation is that this be a programmatic evaluation done by educators and administrators, right. mm -hmm. not school board members, 
not parents. Okay. That 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 we. I thought you mentioned a task force, so I just wasn't that's sure. What, that's what I'm saying. Okay. A task force of those educators that are key to evaluating this experience. Mm -hmm yourself and, and other administrators that would be key to evaluating the administrative aspects of it, and those folks bringing forth the recommendation. So at, at this time, you don't see students and parents involved I, I, either? I really don't. I think that's where we, I think we got the cart before the well, horse. Well, uh, part of our confusion with this is we have done that in the recent past, and we just need some clear direction from, um, if that wasn't enough. Now, we asked a different kind of question than we're asking this time. A question we had asked before, um, is does it belong in the sixth grade? We were looking at a one-time experience. I think what we're very interested in looking at now is building some kind of experience, grades five through eight, that leads up to this, that perhaps includes this, that goes beyond this. Um, so we would be very happy to do that um, and to do that with educators. We have gathered a lot of the information and um, we can continue to do that in the early fall. It will be difficult. I'm assuming you're thinking the task force will start operating next fall. The, the other thing we need to have clarified for us is about Chiwanki for next year, about the fundraiser. We have some parents who have committed to chairing our fundraiser. Um, we need to, we, and, we need to need move to, ahead on that. And we need to you know, move forward with, if that's going to be for Chiwanki this year, but then the next time we're going to move it forward to outdoor experiences, grade five through eight, we certainly can do that with that fundraiser. But I think we need to be clear with some of our purposes and what will actually happen next year and what will happen throughout the year. It, it would seem to me that we would say that we have a program in place, and until there is a programmatic evaluation and recommendation continue. to do something different, mm -hmm. then 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 we would we would continue. I mean, we would continue to stay with that plan. Okay, I, that's that's, that's my perception. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Nancy, can I just ask that? Um, that we get very specific information. I mean, in other, other times that we've tried, we, we have not gotten specific information. And, and, and much as we've um, asked for a syllabus for every course, I think we should be able to have a sheet of paper that <laughs> says, um, you know, what Chiwanki is about, how, how we lead up to it, um, what are the follow-up activities, even if we didn't do anything um, you know, else like this um, for the rest of the middle school um, years for, for these kids. It seems to me if it's so pivotal, we should be able to point to places where we're following up on it through advisor advisee or certain science activities or through student council activity. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But I'd like to see it really um, spelled out. I, I think we should be able to do that Would for you see any that as part of the, of the curriculum. The task force of their studies. Yes. Yeah, and and frankly, the pro program's been going on for ten years. I don't think it should take very long to do this. I mean, we should be able to, you know, have a meeting and, and put down what we do. Um, Nancy, do the students done do, it for a 10 written, years. do a written evaluation before they leave Chiwanki? Yes, they do. They do. And do you have before do they, they have before they leave? Yes, they do. And they get feedback from their Chiwanki counselors on their observations of our students performing in groups during the week. Um, and they submit something to Chiwanki. Do they ever have a visitation? You know how schools have visitation teams that come in to look at programs? Does Chiwanki ever have a visitation team of outside people, like building principals or somebody like that, that go in and look at Chiwanki and give them recommendations? I, I think they would be very open to that. Part of our partnership with Chiwanki over the last several years has been meeting with them and talking about some of our specific needs for our students in general, uh, for specific students, for programs to be involved, uh, for being sure that we're offering group challenges that the entire group can access. And um, they have worked very well with us on that. And um, we have done that. So I think they would be very open to that. As, as with the other providers that we know of, people like Camp Kiev, like Camp Ketchup, like the conservation camp at Bryant Pond. Those are some of the other known ones that we know of. I, I think one other key component is, is this whole issue of who goes with the kids. Um, it was disturbing to me that this year um, uh, we had to hire a sub to go. I, I think there's, you know, I think we need to define who are the important people who need to go on this program. You know, maybe we say, if you're a sixth grade teacher, you, you, do, you do this, and if for some reason you're not going to do it, 
um, you need to switch to another grade. I don't, I don't, again, I don't know, but I think we need to define very carefully, you know, who are the adults um, involved several, in that. Several years ago when we re-looked at this at a middle school, we defined it as a middle school experience that occurred in sixth grade and therefore um, really began to support and broaden out that people from other grade levels would attend as counselors. And coming when it does in May, actually, it does help, especially some of those teachers who are seventh grade teachers get to know the students uh, so that there is that. There is also the component of getting ready. And I, I would say, historically, if we looked at Chewankee, in the beginning when we went, we had, we devoted more time out of our academic, other academic schedule to doing preparation activities and follow-up activities for Chewankee. Over the last few years, for some very good reasons, we have moved away from that as we've tried to increase instructional time in other things. Part of the cost has been that Chewankee has become an isolate. And now it's time for us to relook at that and think of a way to take it off. From our viewpoint, and I talked with the team leaders today about this, Chewankee is a valuable program for our students. We believe that because high school students and our own 7th and 8th graders tell us that after having gone and doing things. Not the immediate return of the 6th graders who had a great time, but a little bit of a distance away. However, the mistake we have made is if we have allowed it to become an isolate. And it, it's, str it's a stronger program than that. It doesn't need to be an isolate. And as an isolate, it is a moment in time. And we want to get, we can get more out of it than a moment in time. Nancy, one other thing that I'd, I'd recommend is that we, we take a look at how much money do other um, school districts spend on outdoor education. We may find that we are wo woefully underspent $7,000 for, for this kind of experience um, seems to me to be money very well spent. And, and maybe we're not, maybe what we need to do is enhance the whole experience. Um, I, I, there's so much to be gained in, in educate. Our job is to educate the whole child, not just, not solely the academic side of, of the child. And, and, and I think that we may find that we're not spending enough mm -hmm. in that area. Then if I understand your proposal, and I know you still have to discuss the proposal, but it would be that um, right at the beginning of Nick, that we would move forward with Chiwaki for next year at this particular time, and our fundraisers can move forward with that um, so for our incoming sixth grade class. But um, in the months of September and October, we would also work with this task force and perhaps come to you back in November with some kind of a report, because that's prior to the budget season and as we begin to plan things for the 98-99 school year um, and begin to look. Would that, would that be part of the proposal? Is that a time frame that you're thinking of? Or? Is that a consensus of the board? I just want to express a few um, other opinions. We had a consensus from this board to look at other programs for this budget year coming up for this six to $7,000. And I feel that as we do an audit of a program, we don't just audit what we have but what our goals and what we want are. And I don't think if we just evaluate what we're doing, I would rather that a group sat down, which is what we tried to do, and said, what are the best things that we could you know, have for our kids for a one-week outdoor experience? And forget what they have been doing at Chewankee, but brainstorm what is the best possible practices. And because I think, if we just say what we're, if we're just evaluating what we've been doing, yeah, it is something that we hear testimonials all the time on how wonderful it is. But we should be more open-minded than that and say, is one a week with 10 kids or 12 kids ideal, or should we be looking at a program? <laughs> Maybe one of the days there are larger group activities, that there are different things that happen. So I guess I would say. I don't want to limit ourselves to just saying we're evaluating what we've had, but the ideal of what we could have. I guess that isn't what I heard with George's proposal. I was thinking what we would need to do um, is to take some outcomes that we're looking for, what our preferred outcomes are, if we can use that word, what our preferred final results are, ex what we want to accomplish. Then what are some of the ways that we might get there? And then begin to then get some information on some providers and begin to link what the providers can give us to what we have already decided that we would like to have um, to do that. And that's the way that we can do it. All I'm, I just want to be right up front and be clear we understand, because I think we have some current fifth grade parents that are wondering too, well, where does that leave Chewankee for next year? But I do hear a part of George's proposal that 
we move forward for Chiwanki for next year and we begin to look at all these others, but in that manner, not just saying, here's why we need to have Chiwanki, but here's what we want students to experience and accomplish. The same question we ask in our other areas, what are the knowledge and skills we want them to have? What's the best way to show that? And then what's the means to get there? Right. And then the te we also need to research the children who choose not to go. We had 17 who chose not to go this year, and we need to listen to those concerns. And, and we do. I, I would offer, though, that in every other year we've gone to Chiwanki, the number has been way under, the top number has been four. I just think we so. need to listen to that piece as well as the other piece. And Beth, I think that, that my recommendation is consistent with what you're saying. It's a, it's a programmatic evaluation of outdoor outdoor experience and I think that that's what you were hearing Nancy but, but rather than waiting till November I really I, I don't believe we should have to wait till November to hear what the how Chuanki has been fitting and and what its goals have been up until this point uh, we would it be possible for you. people just to sit down for an hour and just brainstorm that out it doesn't have to be a formal document but just what all the activities have been so that we know what we've what the school people feel they've been doing with the program I as we, we go ahead and have look an at what is report for you in October of the process of um, what we're doing and and looking at that and that will help clear up some of that picture I want to be sure the question is asked broadly enough yet focused enough that we look at all the questions and don't get into the trap of this is why we need Chiwanki um, which is an easy trap for many of us to fall in because we feel it's been a very positive, constructive experience for us. So to broaden the question, but to still get to that, um, I know we will not have it for the September board meeting because I think that comes very shortly after the start of school, but we could give you an update um, certainly in October as one of the part of the principal's report and have some of the people come. And you would lead that task force, Nancy? Yes. Nancy, I want to thank you for being forthright about saying it has been become, has become an isolated program. That has been my major concern about it. Not that it's a bad program in and of itself. I, that's never, it's never been the, the issue. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I think, I think you're stating honestly where we are, and I appreciate that. Certainly. Anyone else on the board that would like to express or support? So what would be the consensus of the board, Anne? That's, this proposal is fine with me. Keith? I agree, yeah. Kevin? I think we need to move forward. Beth? I agree. There are a number of parents here who have come, I believe, for this issue. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to say anything at this time? Come forward and... Please come to the podium. Yep. And state your name, please. So I want to know whether or not that's going to satisfy him. My name is Susan Steinman, and I was a parent of a fifth grade student who attended that last Wednesday afternoon meeting. And, and I tried to go in with um, kind of a neutral, I, I didn't have a lot of experience with Tuanka, I didn't have a lot of feelings one way or the other. What I heard from those testimonials wasn't Chiwanki. I heard value in a five-day experience. I heard that again and again. So I guess I would just want to reiterate, and, and I think Beth received that information remarkably well. I was really impressed with your ability to, out of what went on in that not organized meeting, to receive and hear what was being said. I commend you. And I just want to reiterate, I think there was a lot expressed about the value of a five-day program. Before we cut, cut it for budgeting reasons, before we even research it. And one part of that, we'll be going back and looking at the kids who did not have a positive experience with Chiwanki. Because I think that their voices were not heard at that meeting. So I think, in addition to looking at our present program, we need to go back. If 60% of the kids have a very positive experience and 40% come out with less than neutral, <laughs> Maybe it's not fitting our needs, but let's look at the five-day intensive program, gather the information from history, and then put that back on the table. And if later down the road it has to be cut because of budget constraints, let that stand. But in the meantime, don't, excuse me, don't investigate it in the name of um, cost. And, and I, I got a sense that that might happen, and I just wanted to make sure that it, 
you know, the five-day experience is looked at totally as part of this research. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Having had three ch Pardon? One more. Okay. Hi, Carla Bernstein. I'm not going to say anything either for Khan Chiwanki right now. I think maybe a lot of people are confused, or maybe I'm speaking for myself as to whether there's going to be an actual vote tonight on the status of Chiwanki next year, or if this is just a discussion. Um, I think a lot of people do have concerns, two-track concerns, what's going to happen next year and what's going to happen in the long run. And I think if people had a sense that um, something like what George was speaking of was going to happen, then that would be fine and wonderful. And I just felt like someone on the board should just make it clear exactly what the outcome of tonight was going to be, because if people sensed there was going to be a vote or something like that, then maybe a lot more people would speak. And if people sort of had a sense of what track you were going to take now, that just might be helpful. Thank you. I think the consensus of the board, and I think it's unanimous, that we go ahead with George's proposal that Chowanke will, will continue for this coming year, but that we start to look to evaluate the program, where it fits into our curriculum, where the experience fits into the experience going in and coming out of the sixth grade. Um, so I believe that the consensus here is that the program will go on this year, and, but that we will, we will look at the broadened experience for all children in the middle school. And having had three children who went through Chiwanki in the early inception in the first, ten, the first 10 years, and what I'm hearing now the experiences may be the same, but the preparation and the outcomes are different as far as how it fits into the middle school experience. So there will not be a vote because it's, it's our, the monies are already in our budget for that experience um, and the additional funds that need to be raised, the parents can go forward and, and raise those funds. The, the co-curricular advisor is still in our budget for that position. Charlie, could we just clarify um, one, one other thing about the budget issue? The budget issue is obviously from the school department's point of view, it is not a big money issue. Where at least for me it becomes um, a budget issue is that we don't have a lot of um, new sources of money <laughs> available to us. And um, so we're, we're, I think we're always looking for ways for money to go farther. And so I guess where it becomes a budgetary issue to me is whether we can spread money out among the grades rather than um, needing additional new monies for a program. I think we need, we need to look at that. Hi, Jenny. Um, I think I went to that meeting as well, and I think what I heard was similar to what Susan heard, which was that um, people would love to see Chiwanki built upon and then have some follow-up. I think what they didn't want to see was something happen to a five consecutive day program for the sixth grade. Uh, I don't know if there was anyone there particularly wedded to Chiwanki, but they were wedded to a five-day consecutive program for sixth grade. Um, the problem with going to the, in the fall, unless there's some long-range plan, is that fundraising is not uh, completed in order to pay for an experience in the fall. Um, I think that you would have to give a year or two down the road. Uh, I know from experience that the raising of the, the major fundraising, which is the Chiwanki gift wrap, the Sally Foster gift wrap, I think does particularly well because the general population knows this is a fundraiser for Chiwanki. I don't think that fundraiser would be nearly as successful 
if it were spread out over the grades for a day here, a day there, or whatever. Now, that doesn't mean you can't come up with some other fundraising ideas. But what I heard at that meeting was, great, wonderful, add more. Add something to the fifth grade. Add a follow-up to seventh and eighth. But please leave the five days in the sixth grade in some capacity, some outdoor experience, uh, adventure, Chewanke, or some other similar type of experience. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? I can't feel it. Sorry, I just came from for a baseball game. And I hope that I, I come as a teacher and as a parent and someone who's been working in, involved with the schools as a volunteer and in the community. And being on the science curriculum committee, I see tonight that we spent the last 45 minutes talking about Chawanki and talking about sixth graders affecting 115 kids. I just hope that the community gets behind putting together curriculums for all the other subject matter that affects K-12 and school districts. And when I see time spent talking about monies and fundraising and not time talking about getting science, getting history, getting English, I just like to know where we are priority-wise and where we're going to spend our time. And I just hope that everyone here has the same emphasis on pushing together to getting something for all the kids in the school district, not just for sixth grade. Okay, why don't we move on to staff recognition? Annually, <clears throat> pardon me, annually at the June board meeting, we recognize long-term staff members. And it's my pleasure tonight to recognize for those who have had reached their 10-year anniversary in the system, Tony Boffa, Mary Ann Brown, Sue Coffey, Ray Cooper, Ted DeMille, Joan Edmond, Bernadette Frost, Tracy Greenwood, Carrie Hall, Jean Harmon, Sally O'Malley, Claire Ransbottom, David Shields, Belinda Snell, and Wren Wilkinson. Of those who have reached the 15-year mark, Terry Brower, John Casey, Sharon Merrill, Nancy St. John, and Tom Wilbur. We have one at the 20-year mark, Judy Gray, we have two at 25 years, Mary Beth Benoit and Judy Ferrente. We have two at 30 years, Mary Bruns and Keith Weatherby. And we have one at 35 years, Paul Jackson. And these folks will also be recognized at our opening meeting in the fall, at our opening staff meeting in the fall. Um, Mary Ann Brown's name was on this list, and I know that Charlie mentioned it at the beginning of the meeting, and I did want to say that certainly uh, Mary Ann's resignation or retirement from the system is a great loss. Although I've only been here a year, I certainly quickly grew to recognize her great contributions to the system. And when she first gave me her letter of resignation, I sort of stashed it away in a drawer and hoped that she would change her mind, but she hasn't. So uh, certainly we wish her well, but she will be sadly missed. I also want to thank all of the parents who returned their surveys. We had 184 surveys returned from Pond Cove School, 157 from the middle school, and 34 from the high school for a total of 375. And I realize they took a considerable amount of time, and we thank you. And if you haven't done your survey yet, we will gladly take them at any point. Uh, as Keith mentioned, we've had some wonderful music and drama presentations this spring, and I commend all of the students and the staff who were involved in those. And just one other thing, we did have a number of sets of minutes tonight to be approved, and I wanted to mention to people that copies of those minutes, if anyone is interested in reading the entire minutes, copies are always available upstairs at the superintendent's office, and there are also copies of the current minutes available in the town office, and we welcome anyone who would like to read those. Okay, we now move on to the principal's report and we ask our high school principal to come forward for his last meeting with us. Thank you. I uh, had a written report prepared, but I have a few connections at the newspaper, so tomorrow 
Uh, just pick up the front page and you'll find out what's going on. It was supposed to be an icebreaker. Two days in a row you're going to be in the front uh, page? First of all, um, as, as it's already been mentioned, the, the musical it was uh, at the end of May and first week, the first day of June was, was a tremendous success. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Mullen, his staff, and the, all of the students that were involved, and also to the community because we had a great turnout all four days. And it was just wonderful to see it as a community event, not just a high school event. Also, our spring concert, if anyone attended that, was again a sensational performance by our uh, bands and also our chorus. And again, uh, my appreciation and thanks to Mr. Richardson and Ms. Lee for a, for a wonderful evening. Uh, Title Town came back to Cape, as, uh, as mentioned. Congratulations to Coach Strout and Coach Ray for the boys and girls tennis. And also our boys and girls lacrosse team won the state championship this past Saturday. Coach Birch, Birch and Coach Thomas deserve, uh, again, applause for that. Plans for graduation have, uh, continue. We had our first rehearsal today. It was a good, we had a class meeting beforehand. Um, and we had a great meeting today, and, and rehearsal went very well. It's planned for 2 o'clock at Fort Williams. Governor King will be the featured spe speaker. He hasn't called me yet, so I don't know if uh, he's changed his mind. Uh, hopefully his press agent will call this week, and we'll, we'll arrange the time. Um, the uh, high school students will be dismissed at 1 o'clock on Friday, so that with, with graduation being at the fort, we need uh, students who wish to attend the uh, ceremony, and also for our high school staff who take part in that. Buses will run at, at 1 o'clock. Uh, step up day for, for the 8th graders will be next Tuesday. Again, and that will be toward the end of the day. Senior exams are wrapping up. In fact, tomorrow is the last day of uh, senior exams. They have their banquet Thursday night at Keeley the Caterers, and then uh, Friday will be graduation at Fort Williams. The weather looks good right now. I keep, this is the week I watch the re weather report. Sometimes that's not real good in Maine, but uh, <coughs> right now it looks real good. Uh, Monday through Thursday of next week, underclassmen will be taking their exams. Those schedules go, begin at 7.30 to 9.30 and then 10 to 12. Buses will run. We'll have a normal bus run in the morning, and then there will be a bus run at 10.15, and then one at 12.15 uh, 12 for the students concluding their exams there. Uh, the high school also, yesterday we had a meeting with Janet Allison from NISAC, and this was kind of an update, update, update from all of the uh, feedback. Uh, we've had communication since our October meeting. If you recall the workshop we had back then, we were notified uh, less than a month ago that she wanted to visit and meet with uh, members of the staff who were involved in that, in that uh, work. And we had a very positive meeting and we're expecting everything to be okayed. Uh, she said we will not hear until the end of June with final uh, approval from NISAC. Uh, we've also been in looking to, to um, fill a math position. I was hoping to have a Recommendation tonight, I will say that we did offer th uh, to three different people a math position and all three have declined. We have a fourth in waiting that uh, hopefully I will hear from tomorrow, who's a very, very strong candidate. Um, so we need to fill, we still need two math positions to fill and we will begin interviewing for a one-year social studies. I appreciate the board's support of, of Joyce Morrissey. The reason she did not take the position, that she has a certification in uh, social work. And, and if I guess that uh, the, the potential of that certification running out at the end of this year, if she does not do a, a certain amount of hours, that she will lose that certification. It's very difficult to, to reestablish that. So she's trying to work right now and could not make a commitment to the position. But we have had over 45 applications for the one-year social studies position and some very, very strong candidates. So hopefully um, we'll make that, that, uh, an, you know, make that uh, announcement to you not at the next board meeting, but before then. So again, we're waiting for a, a, uh, two people of, uh, tomorrow on math positions, and uh, we'll be getting involved in the social studies search with Ray Cooper and members of the social studies team. Are there any questions? Can you just ex um, share with the board what the project graduation experience is going to be? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Charlie. Thanks for mentioning that. This year, um, the, uh, the seniors, this was initiated back last fall, wanted to, to uh, experience a different adventure than, than the uni University of New England uh, situation in which we take bus kids down to UNA and have an all-night activity. And we tied in the, the uh, actually normally would have a class trip this week down the Soccer River a day with the kids. Well, the students took that money that they generally spend in a class trip, contributed it with po project graduation and are going on an overnight up to the Great Forks, Grand Forks, and, and our Grand Forks, thank you, and, and they will be uh, experiencing a whitewater rafting uh, canoe trip the, the, the day after graduation. They will be bused from the high school at 7 p.m., arrive there at 10. There are activities planned at a lodge there in early morning. And the students have choices from, from uh, the rafting. They can also canoe. 
they can, uh, there'll be hiking available and just kind of lounging around time also. And again, this is a tremendous effort on the part of the parents too who will be volunteering uh, uh, with, with Mr. Ely as the class advisor going up there. So we're, it's a new experience. The kids have really been, uh, are excited about it and, and work very, very hard in the preparation and uh, we're look, they're looking forward and we're looking forward to, uh, to being a very, very big success and maybe something we'll look at again. Any other comments? Ann? Go ahead. I just want to say on, on behalf of myself as a parent and on behalf of the community and on behalf of the board, we want to thank you for your years of service and working with you the last four years as a, as a principal. Thank you very much. And, and I, I also want to say the same to your, your cohort <laughs> standing in the back. Also, Mr. But I, <laughs> I want to thank you for your support and, and it's been an honor and, and a privilege to, to work with the, the staff, children, and also the board of, of Cape Elizabeth, children, young adults, uh, and families. Um, it has been a rewarding experience that I will never forget and hopefully take with me into my next experience and utilize the, what I have gained. So thank you very, very much. Anyone? Right? You beat me to it, Charlie. <laughs> this being my last uh, board meeting as an employee, uh, of the community, and I've been coming to many of these for many years. I just want to take a moment to thank the people I've worked with and for, and in particular, I wanted to thank Mr. DePusco for the last four years in terms of uh, uh, all of his help and, and what you've mentioned in terms of his uh, dedication, concern for the students of this community. Um, and I, I just want you to know that I have appreciated the support um, it's been challenging, uh, very challenging. I hope that I've met the challenge on many occasions. I can tell you that I've tried my best. Um, there are always going to be people who will find you wanting, <laughs> and uh, I guess you learn to adjust to that to some degree. But uh, I, I just want you to know that I really have appreciated working with Mr. Fusco and the staff, the board, the superintendent, the previous four, five superintendents, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. and. Uh, since this was my last official one, I just wanted to say thank you. And I usually don't come up, as you know. I kind of stay in the background. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Mr. DeFusco, as well. Okay, Tom, it's your turn. <laughs> Allen line, uh, but I'll be brief. I, I just wanted to uh, just update you in a few odds and ends at the end, uh, end of school at Pond Cove. The uh, main educational assessment results arrived for fourth grade. Uh, they typically don't send them all at once, but we got the individual student reports and the secretaries have mailed those out to parents. Later on, probably the summer, we'll get the, the grade level report. Why it's done this way, I'm not sure, but at least we have those out to, uh, to parents. And about the same time, since we did the California Achievement Test earlier this year, the CATS, they've arrived too. And we are sending those home to parents. That's grades two and three. And I forget what grades in the middle school, but they're, they're home. We haven't done a full analysis of the whole grade levels, but we'll be looking at that as a faculty this week and then taking it up again in, in the fall. So we were able to do it earlier. We have the results back, um, and we'll see how valuable they are. Um, in case you missed it, um, Pond Cove did a little research display of student work last, last week. I think it was last Wednesday or Thursday night. There were 20 or 25 students there who had worked with Mary Cerullo, a visiting author researcher. She's, she's a scientist. And this was one more indication of the, uh, the strength of the research strand. I, uh, I was really impressed with the work that the children had done from grades two up through, up through four. They were strong and powerful and very, um, all the reports had uh, showed good voice in their writing. At the end of May, I met with the, sort of the new fourth grade team. As you know, we're, we're, we're reorganizing a little bit in the fourth grade. So the uh, eight teachers who will be teaching fourth grade met with me uh, at the end of the month. And I, I must say I agree with Kerry's remarks. We were able to spend uh, 
a day talking about uh, not just nuts and bolts, but curriculum and instruction and standards. And uh, I hope to uh, be able to do more of that. On the same day, just a reminder that we had the uh, volunteer celebration in the morning that Gail Schmader organized, and it was a terrific success. And I want to, uh, again, thank all the volunteers who turned out at Pond Cove during the year, and thank Gail for all her hard work. It was a terrific success. And last week was our second annual kindergarten to first grade orientation, which is really part and parcel of the new building. Nancy St. John organized that. We had a very large turnout, and uh, people were appreciative of the opportunity to come meet the teachers, uh, see the principal, assistant principal, but they were very complimentary about uh, the new building, particularly its appearance on that almost random night. It, it was sparkling clean and it really, really looked good. Even the playground looked good. They had swept it up and looked terrific. And although it's mentioned before, uh, it's been mentioned tonight uh, about Mary Ann, I've been more or less in a state of denial about Mary Ann's <laughs> departure. And I, she's a very private person, uh, but I just wanted to say that um, her energy, her dedication, her enthusiasm, her willingness to go beyond the call of duty every day at Pond Cove School, to me, personifies everything that's good about Pond Cove. I'll miss her personally, and I think everybody else will. So thanks a lot, Marianne. And two things. I, I'm sorry, I just have to say something about Marianne, too. But what I'll it's really so miss about her is that incredible smile yep. when you walk in and just the smile in her voice when you call on the phone and how um, genuinely, sincerely interested right. in she is in everybody. That will be math. We'll have a successor, but we'll never replace her. No, her. never. <laughs> but I do have also one other thing about the research thing that we got, the packet we got, um, since you brought up the research. Um, presentation it gives me the excuse just to say this is incredible the amount of work again as in the science area that has gone into this and it's just heartening to see it and um, I thought the, uh, the the memo about what's going on in Pond Cove was um, that's Shari's work was yeah. was excellent yeah. excellent and this is a, it's a K through 12 commitment it was part of the IASA plan and funds were diverted that way I think about seven thousand dollars and yeah. it made it made a difference uh, for people to do that well it's great yeah so Kerry can take heart I think yeah things going on out there. <laughs> and certainly I, I in relation to that I want to remark that Joyce Bell has been the moving force behind that committee, along with Sherry Robinson right. and yeah. Hayden Atwood. Without those three people, it wouldn't have moved. Very quiet, very effective, and I think it's made a big difference. Beth. I just wanted to say something about uh, Mary Ann Brown also. Um, She'll be turning off the television. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, at school um, a day recently, and there was a mix-up with picking up a, a child that didn't have a note that I was supposed to bring home. And I just stood there and watched how Marianne, in getting all the buses called, the phone ringing, waiting on children or parents, she just was able to do it all with a smile. It, it was unbelievable. And as everybody says, there is always that smile in her voice. But she also knows almost every child that comes to that window, not only that, their parents, what class they're in, where their brothers and sisters are. I mean, it is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, we will, our family will miss her Everybody will. and um, wish her well. Great. And Nancy, middle school. As um, Kate already said to you and reminded you that we do have an eighth grade recognition night next Monday night. We'd like to invite any of you. I know some of you will be in attendance because you happen to be the parents of eighth graders. Uh, we hope that you'll be in attendance anyway. I guess that was rather quick for me to assume you'd be there, but um, hopefully you will be. This is sponsored by our parents' association. Um, it is a recognition night, not to be confused with graduation, where you terminate your education, perhaps, and go on by choice. We expect all of our students to go on to the ninth grade somewhere. Um, but this is a recognition of completion of their middle level years. Um, and it's something we do, everyone together, and everyone is treated the same. We do have awards assemblies coming up Wednesday afternoon where individual recognition will be recognized upon the students. The longest assembly is for the eighth graders. Sixth and seventh grade have a shorter assembly that they run grade level wise. And the fifth grade does awards within their own classrooms. And that's sort of a progression that you go through in the middle school. 
Rick also mentioned that we would be participating in a step-up day as our eighth graders become incoming freshmen on that afternoon and go to the high school. This gives us an opportunity to do an internal step-up day with incoming eighth graders, seventh graders, and sixth graders. Incoming eighth and seventh graders will get a chance to just tour the area by meeting different teachers who teach in curriculums. They will not necessarily be their teachers, but they'll hear a brief overview of seventh grade expectations. They will also, seventh and eighth grade expectations, they will also receive supply lists for those school supplies um, that they need when they come back to school in September. The seventh and eighth grade schedules will be mailed out in late August for each student. On the sixth grade, our incoming sixth graders will step up. They will meet their teaching teams that day, um, do some quick talking about the sixth grade experience, and also receive a supply list. That evening, we will have a fifth grade, incoming fifth grade orientation, which families, parents, and the incoming fifth graders are invited to. We will do a brief overview and welcome them to the middle school in the cafetorium. The major part of the evening is to meet your teaching team for next year, hear a bit about fifth grade, kind of look where your classroom will be, and also receive the supply list. Now the supply list, we will have extra copies of those supply lists in our guidance office and in our main office in case any family misplaces theirs between June and August. And um, we encourage people to call us and we'd be glad to have one for them and they could come and pick that up. When students go home on the 19th with their report card, there will be um, several things there. Of course, the good report of the year, or at least a report of the year, hopefully it's one that brings a smile to um, your face, but we know in some cases it will bring other things. Um, also included, we will have a summer reading list, and that is for all of our incoming students, so that the fourth grade report cards will have these as well. We are requiring each student to read a minimum, and that is a minimum of two books over the summer. We give a suggested list. We also highlight for parents the classes, novels we'll be reading in common. We ask people to stay away from those, um, but to read any of the others or things off the list. It is important that students do this because I think the first student day in the proposed calendar that's going to be looked at tonight is on a Tuesday. By Thursday of that week in each language arts class, no matter who teaches your language arts class, um, you will be doing a writing task. Each student will be doing an in-class, on-demand writing task that comes from the summer reading. So it's very important that everybody do that. This helps us um, get a writing, early writing sample for them and also to give credit for that summer reading. As Kate also said, we had our last dance and social. I would like to thank the students for their behavior. Um, students grades five and six did very well. Karaoke was a success. Angela Faraday and Ann Magnuson taught everyone how to do the electric slide. Um, they were energetic and did that for two hours. So if you ever need any entertainment at your home, please contact these ladies. They will get your entire family involved. Um, and even though I'm not a person who does that, I even had a chance to get up and sing karaoke. Not the highlight of the evening, but certainly one of the events. Uh, and that was a great success, completely organized by the parents um, and done for the students in fifth and sixth grade. Also organized by the parents was the last dance for our seventh and eighth graders. Um, and the students said, wow, it was a great dance. We had a wonderful time. It was decorated by the parents and um, they supplied all the food and that was greatly appreciated and the students enjoyed the DJ. So all parts of the dance. We even had some reports that as it went, it got closer to 11 o'clock, even some of our students were saying they were tired. And if you can exhaust a seventh and eighth grader, you have accomplished much. So um, we thank those parents for all that work. A couple of updates, our behavior task force. And um, when George started using that term with me, he said, Nancy, if you use the word task force, that means it has a beginning and an end in a relatively short amount of time, as opposed to a committee that can go on forever. So our task force has worked, and we do have a final draft of a code of conduct. And I think as I was skimming through some of the parental feedback forums about consistency on part of the administration, part of our hope in doing this is that you will see we are more consistent. One of the things on the last part, and this will be in our handbook next year, is a grid. I don't expect people to be able to read this, but um, this is a grid for things that happen and what, the first, what happens as a first consequence, second, and third, um, so that people Students, families are very, very clear. And I, that will be part of our handbook. That's a little pitch to let you know that our handbook may cost us a little bit more money than we originally thought. But um, we're certainly going to look to 
see what else we can eliminate from it. Some of these are duplications of things before, but this is presented in a very concise and clear manner. I want to thank um, Phil Jewett for his participation on this committee, George and Beth for their participation on the committee, um, Susan Dana and Cheryl Higgins represented our teachers and they did a fine job, and also to the two parent, other two other parents who were involved, Ann Swift Kayata and Rachel Stamieskin, who did a tremendous amount of work on this effort. So um, congratulations to one and all. Our next step is going to be to work on the rollout plan um, for this so that we can all be on the right page and on all the pages um, throughout next year. So we will work on that. Um, Rachel and Ann and I are going to meet this summer to work on that so that we're ready in August with teachers to look at that. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention, I do want to mention that will be attached to the report cards. We have had, um, in pursuant to school board policy, we have notified our current eighth graders at several times during the year about that the fact that they need to be passing all of their subjects in order to be eligible for the first quarter participation in any extracurricular, including athletics, activities at the high school. We attached a, copy, a memo and a copy of that policy to the second trimester report cards, to the third trimester progress reports. We will be attaching a copy of the policy once again to those report cards who by their performance indicate that they need to be notified that they are not eligible for participation at the high school. Um, we realize and we do anticipate that there will be some feedback about this, but we really have tried to communicate with parents clearly about that and with students. We know that the clearest communication is going to come when suddenly you're held accountable to that particular policy, but we will be doing that. Recently, um, with Sue Gannon's help, and Sue Gannon is a parent of an incoming fifth grader, we had, a we had a meeting with the fifth grade team and parent volunteers. This is something we're really trying to do is to increase parent volunteers in our middle school. I've talked with Gail Schmader. We've targeted some ideas and some thoughts we're going to work with. But with Sue's help, we were also able to have a very introductory meeting with the parents who could come, I think it was last week on a Monday, and um, met with the fifth grade team. The team shared some of the ways they've used volunteers in the past. The parents shared some of the things they have done. Everyone met one another, um, and it's just that initial meeting. It's something we always intend to do on orientation night, and sometimes we don't get to it, so we wanted to be sure we got that message across. The other thing we are working on, the syllabi that people have asked for, we will have those for you by the end of the month. We are going to use those next year in our curriculum work as we link to uh, standards um, that we have developed such through the reading committee, through the science work, and also the learning results. So um, you will be seeing those. Now, a couple mentions. We would also like to recognize Mary Ann Brown. She is one of the people who helps people transfer from Pond Cove to the middle school um, and does that very well. And she's been a valued resource to us when we haven't been sure about how to read someone's emergency card or something has gotten lost or every number has been exhausted. Do you know anyone else? Um, and she has always been at the ready hand to help us to make a smooth transition and welcomes us when we visit at the Pond Cove Elementary School as well too. So we will miss her. Um, we certainly congratulate her on her many years of fine service to Cape Elizabeth. She is someone that the middle school students remember with fondness, and I think that's important to note. Later tonight, you will be um, acting upon a resignation from one of our faculty members, Randy Perkins, and I would just like to mention briefly that um, Randy has done a fine job with us over the last several years, both in industrial technology and being willing to change that curriculum, and also um, very actively involved in our computer and technology work. Um, he has helped us set up machines, fix machines, load machines, and also help us all learn how to use the machines and to think about how to use technology in our instruction. We wish him well in his future endeavors and thank him for his time with us. Later tonight, you will also be acting upon and considering um, retirement by one of our faculty members, J. Michael Madden. Um, he is the eighth grade Mr. Madden who teaches science. Um, Rick Madden, who works with us as well, said, well, at first I tried to describe, I was the Mr. Madden with the beard, but they both have beards. And he said, I was going to describe I was the Mr. Madden who still had hair. But he said, that's not true. Neither one of us do. So um, for years, we have called him J. Michael to help distinguish which Mr. Madden he is for us, and also the Mr. Madden who teaches science. He has indeed been teaching science at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School for 29 years. During that time, he has helped the middle school move physically twice once into the old high school and to part of our building which came down a few years ago, 
thank goodness, um, by plan and not by accident. He also has helped us move into the new building. During all of this, um, he has worked and seen through many curriculum revisions and thoughts. He has seen middle level education through many transitions. He has been a team leader more than once. Um, when Michael is a team leader, he is very efficient, he is very dedicated, he is very thorough to the work that he does. He represents not only his grade level, but also the whole school as well. Throughout the year, um, years of service, Mike has also organized many weekend hikes, not always as a stipended position, in fact, most of the time not as one, um, for students who would like to go. And many times, these might be small groups of students, but they are groups of students who really needed to have someone organize a hike for them on a Saturday, and he has done that. He has helped some of our students in their interest in photography and really developing that um, for a period of time. He had a photography club in the middle school. He has served as a coach, um, especially in the area of, of cross country and track. And over the last several years, he has been one of the middle school teachers who has been willing to go to Chiwanki and be part of that experience. Um, he is going on to other adventures and other things that he would like to experience in his life before he's ready for big time retirement. Um, but he is looking forward to that. Um, and we certainly wish him well, we will miss him, and we thank him for his time at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, but yeah. I have one <laughs> <laughs> um, Nancy, I've gotten um, several phone calls just in the past day and a letter in the mail today about the issue of band scheduling, and there seems to be just um, rampant rumors um, out there. So. This might be a good opportunity to take to let people know, because I don't know what's going on. Um, what's going on with that? Um, and, and I have okay. received several letters um, as well, too. Most of them very well worded. Some of them interestingly worded, what she'll say. Um, however, the, the way that we were looking at the band scheduling, um, this was for seventh and eighth grade students. Currently, our allied arts groups are organized by the instruments that they take, knowing that not everyone takes an instrument, but this provided Tony Boffa the opportunity to meet like instruments for sectional lessons. Having it come out of the Allied Arts schedule also eliminated the need to pull them out of math class, out of social studies, out of foreign language, which is a common practice in many other schools. Next year, we wanted, we looked at a proposal of perhaps organizing our allied art groups in grade seven and eight according to social studies classes. This was to promote our efforts in research literacy and in technology literacy and tied to a curriculum. Looking forward to the transition into the 98, 99 school year when we would pull computer off our allied art schedule and have the computer lab open for great for classes to sign up and have it become a part of the instructional flow of a particular class, especially at grades seven and eight. We are working with Jay Trevaro and his committee to see what when the basic computer skills of keyboarding, database, and those things are accomplished. When we did when we looked at that, it did mean that we there was no way that we could organize our schedules so that we had social studies classes organized into instrument groups. Our computer told us we could not do it. I will tell you that the computer gave up on our master schedule, and I finally did it last Friday. But we're still working on it. We have hopes for yet the future. Um, however, it was unable to handle all the particulars of our schedule. And when we put the band request in there, it just said no. In looking over that decision over the last few days, and I've had conversations with many teachers, it's something we only needed to do for one year. So therefore, we decided that we would take our energy and think of better ways to meet the research literacy and technology literacy things, keeping our allied arts schedules organized so that we could have like sectionals. So the short answer is there is no change to what our schedule has been in the past for band. There, I have received several letters about eliminating sectionals. Sectionals were never to be eliminated. It was the idea of like sectionals that we investigated. We have decided not to do that. We are going to move forward. Um, and look at some ways to accomplish the research and technology skills. Thank you. Jolly, can I ask a question? Yes. To Nancy? Uh, in our packet, Nancy, was uh, minutes from the team leaders meeting June 3rd. And on the agenda, I believe the correct pronunciation, uh, the first item was syllabi. 
Yes. And uh, one of the statements was, the question was raised about what would be done with the information once it was compiled. No one had an answer. As you notice, I was not at that team leaders meeting. Right. Um, that was one of the days I was working in Augusta. Today we had that same question, we did answer it. We, I reminded everyone that as a result, I recall it this way, that as a result of our January 28th workshop, we agreed to go back and look at some of our syllabi for all of our courses, all of the grade levels, to see if we could get them in a format similar to what the foreign language format was at that particular time because that was an easily read readout. That's what we are preparing for you in June. Next year, I see us using, so the, one of the answers is the school board will get a chance to look at those um, as part of your work with us in curriculum and curriculum development. Next year, we intend to take those syllabi, connect them with some of our best practices, which would be samples of student work, uh, connect those with our local standards in reading and in science, which we have developed, and then also connect them with the learning results in places where we don't have um, local standards and make sure that we have an idea of how to accomplish the thing so that our syllabi will become under constant revision, this will be done every year, what are the skills and knowledge we want students to know, how will we know that they've known that, and what are some of the resources we're going to use to accomplish that. And um, so we will be using those in our curriculum work next year. But the easy but answer is the parents, <laughs> but they've got to go to parents and, students. parents and students. They are also going to go to parents and students exactly on the curriculum nights in the fall. That was one of the major pieces that parents didn't feel they had the expectations of what was going to go on in the course or just an outline. So exactly. And we heard that last year as a result of not all of our open houses, but some of them. And this year we made a recommitment to everyone knows we're going to be handing those out in the fall. Um, some of the team leaders were more specifically concerned about how they were going to use them and what was going to happen with that. So that's part of where their question came from. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. We now move on to committee reports, and the first is our finance subcommittee and our new finance chairman, Keith. Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, we met this evening at 6.30 uh, in the chamber's conference room. Uh, the finance committee signed the warrants. We examined uh, the current food service income statement, uh, and our lunch program is uh, destined to break even for the year. Uh, we looked at a computer capital lease, which uh, under new business we'll have to approve a, a lease. Uh, we, we looked at our non-collective salaries for our central office staff, examined a letter from immigration, which uh, spurred a, a, a discussion about our hiring practices. Uh, we looked at a school bus purchase uh, this spring as opposed to next fall, which will uh, result in about a 5% savings in the price. Uh, we reviewed the appropriations report, and uh, our, our budget is right on uh, target for the year. We're currently 92% uh, funded, and we examined the use of facilities disperse disbursement request by Sue Weatherby. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to our policy subcommittee report and our chair, George M. Um, seeing as how I just became the chair last night, um, uh, I can say that we have no uh, policies for first or second readings this evening. Uh, the last meeting, uh, which I was at, was on uh, Thursday, May 15th, and at that time uh, the school handbooks were reviewed um, for the high school, the middle school, and Pond Cove specifically to look at consistency of content um, across all of the schools and uh, consistency of language. Um, in uh, preparation for uh, the, the printing of those handbooks. Uh, there is a harassment policy that is in, still in draft form and being reviewed by legal counsel, and that, I guess, will come to me when, when, that's, uh, when that review is done. Um, there is another draft policy having to do with gifts to the school um, that uh, is being worked on. One of the uh, priorities, uh, once we get started again in August um, with the policy subcommittee, we'll be um, looking at um, an age-old time on task policy, um, which addresses uh, how much time is actually dedicated to learning tasks and specifically ties in the mechanics of the calendar, um, which was an earlier discussion. Um, I uh, will be meeting with Gail Dransville, had a nice conversation with her uh, yesterday. 
um, just to kind of uh, swap batons here. And the first meeting uh, will be in August, but not yet scheduled. Thank you. We now move on to unfinished business and approval or of our 97-98 calendar. Uh, we do have a calendar to present tonight. The calendar committee met, um, we made a week ago, a week or so ago. Um, as we said at the last meeting, the first day of school will be Tuesday, September 2nd, with a teacher workshop day in August on the 28th. The only real um, things of note were where the teacher workshop days were going to fall, and um, Clark Smith, the union president, brought in feedback from the teachers, and the days that were the consensus of that group were to use December 22nd and 23rd and April 17th as um, three professional development days. There will be a day and a half for conferences in the fall and a half day in April, again, just preceding that staff development day. Um, I don't think there are any other major um, concerns or points of interest. Um, we are looking for the next year to try to group three staff development days in August. And um, we would need time to plan that and look at that, which is why they're not in this calendar. But it is certainly, um, there is some interest in pursuing that. November 7th and April 16th will be early release days. They won't be half days. Legally. Legally. Yes. Um, any other questions, comments? And I'd like to make a motion that we um, approve the calendar as presented. Second. Yep. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, we now move on to new business. And first is a consideration of the superintendent's nomination of high school. Oh, you don't have one. At this point, no. Okay. We need to pass on that. We had okay. hoped we'd have something this evening, but do not. Okay, a consideration of the superintendent, superintendent's nomination of high school special edu education teacher for a one-year position, 97-98. Yes, I wish to recommend to the board Ben Raymond for a one-year position. He's replacing Jackie Petrillo, who will be on leave for next school year. Ben has been with us in an ed tech position. I'd like to make a motion. We accept uh, Ben Raymond for a one-year position. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, a consideration of the superintendent's nominations for fall athletic positions, 1997. Yes, I have a list at the high school. Andy Strout for boys varsity soccer. Ben Raymond for boys JV soccer. Jeff Thorak for boys freshman soccer. Charlie Carroll, girls varsity soccer. Craig Roberts, girls JV soccer. Janet Hoskin, varsity field hockey. Sue Weatherby, JV field hockey. Karen Willows, JV Field Hockey, Paul Jackson, Boys Cross Country, and Mary Ann Doss, Girls Cross Country. At the middle school, Anine Burgess, 8th grade field hockey, Sarah Randall, 7th grade field hockey, Joe Doan, 7th and 8th grade, Boys Cross Country, and Therese Roberts, 7th and 8th grade, Girls Cross Country. We have a motion. Someone? I'd like to make the, uh, the motion that we accept the superintendent's nominations for the fall athletic positions for uh, 97 98. Do you have a second? Second. Yeah. Point of clarification? Yes. Could someone explain to me, please, what the difference is between level three, uh, level three and level four? You want to come forward, Scott? Within the school system, I think it's ten. Years. You go from three to four. I think it's at, at the ten-year mark. Okay, it has to do with there's a a matrix in which uh, pay scales for the the coaches are based not only on hours of, of uh, work with kids, but also experience also plays a part in the in the uh, scheme of of higher uh, of paying coaches. And a level three is less than ten years. A level four is someone who's been in the system ten years or more. Is it a substantial difference or nominal? Or? Thank you. 
Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, a consideration of teacher retirements. Right. Um, as mentioned earlier in several reports, Michael Madden, who is an eighth grade teacher, uh, has requested retirement, and I recommend that approval. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the retirement of Mike Madden. Your second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Yes. All right, I have two resignations. The first one is Randy Perkins, who has been an industrial technology teacher at the middle school. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the uh, resignation of Randy Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. And any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. And I also have a resignation from Francisco Ruiz, also known as Paco Ruiz, who has been a high school Spanish teacher with us this year. Go ahead. I'd like to make the recommendation, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to accept the uh, resignation of Paco Ruiz. Second. Second. George, any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, the next is a proposal for staff training from the Search Institute. And I believe we have someone who's going to present that. My name is Ann Cranshaw, and I'm co-chair of the Cape Community Coalition. I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of the coalition tonight. When I saw that I was at the end of the agenda, <laughs> I knew I would be talking to a group of people that were pretty tired and hot and actually rather diminished in number as well. So I promise that this will be brief. This has been a stressful year for the community of Cape Elizabeth in ways that are familiar to all of us. It has been particularly difficult for the school community. Students, teachers, staff, administrators, school board, parents, and police officers. I think we can all agree that there's been entirely too much emphasis on the negative, with the positive often overlooked or taken for granted. This seems to be such a part of our community that the better attended meetings are the ones that deal with problems, while those meetings that offer positive alternatives are less well attended. Yet, by far, the best attended events are those which celebrate our children and their accomplishments, things like school open houses, plays, awards banquets, religious rites of passage, sporting events, and the like. When we pay more attention to the negative issues than to the positive, we become fragmented. The positive pulls us together and gives us new energy and purpose. The negative separates us and overwhelms our ability to cope. We've seen that happening in Cape Elizabeth. We've become separated by our affiliations, by our interests, by our jobs, and even by our ages. We need to adopt a common set of goals in order for our community to pull together around all of our positive efforts and use the resulting energy to expand the ways that we provide the supports that our children need. The Cape Community Coalition believes that the Healthy Communities, Healthy Children initiatives developed by Search Institute can provide a framework for a common set of goals and opportunities for every member of the community to participate in working toward those goals. We believe that the work of developing the 40 developmental assets is consistent with the mission statement of the coalition, the mission and vision statement for our schools, and probably the statements of purpose for all churches, service groups, and youth organizations. We can no longer expect the schools to solve our problems any more than we can continue to blame them for causing the problems. However, the community looks to the schools as an important part of their children's lives, and the school community must play an integral part in the process of asset building in order for it to succeed. In fact, the schools are already heavily invested in the process of building assets as our families and other groups in Cape Elizabeth. The first part of the task will be for everyone to learn the common language of the asset building model. Then we'll be better able to dialogue with each other about our work. 
The coalition recognizes the need to create a speakers bureau to go into the community to share the information. What we would like to see is a commitment from the school board and community to begin the process of getting this model to all school staff. We are asking for one day of staff development time. This would be for uh, staff from all three schools. Uh, would also include um, uh, students, some students and other um, uh, parents and adults from the community, and approximately $2,000 that would cover the cost of such a program. I have to believe that every member of the school community is concerned that 29% of our students say they experience a caring school environment and that every citizen of Cape Elizabeth cares that 26% of our students feel they are valued members of this community. Is there any more important purpose for a community than nurturing its children and providing the environment they need to become healthy, happy, and productive individuals? The President's Summit for America's Future in Philadelphia last month spawned the Mayor's Community Youth Summit, which was held yesterday at the Portland Arts and Technical High School. Community and business leaders from Portland listened as 60 students talked about the resources they need to lead productive and fulfilling lives. Five areas have been identified as crucial to the development of healthy youth. They are a caring adult, a safe place to learn and grow, a healthy start, a marketable skill, and the opportunity to perform community service. Search Institute was asked by the National Task Force to develop these five basic needs from the list of 40 developmental assets for the National Summit. The asset building process is beginning to happen in this country on many levels and in many places. Goals have been set at the national level, state level, and within individual communities. Cape Elizabeth has an opportunity to take a leadership role, and surrounding communities are watching to see what we do here. I would ask that you, just, you, that you take the time to educate yourselves about the asset building framework if you haven't already um, done so before you make a decision to support this. Um, I believe you all have received a copy of the proposal. Um, I have more copies if anyone in the audience is interested. And you all also should have a copy of the report on the results of the, the survey that was given to sixth through ninth grade students. Um, the, in the detail of the proposal, um, would, it's asked that, that the school board would commit um, a half, approximately a half hour for a uh, presentation by students and um, adults on, on what this workshop would, um, you know, would entail. Are there any questions on the proposal itself? Ann. It, is this the sum total of the proposal? Because when I read it, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. Are you, are you saying that um, we would have to commit to doing this before they would present to us in the 30 minute? No, I think you would like, doing. I think that what Ed Forbish from Common Ground and Prevention would like to do is to put together a presentation before you decide before you make a commitment. He's asking for a commitment to 30 minutes of your time to convince you that you should commit to the in-staff in development day for this purpose. Frankly, the audience, what, no. I was just going to say the audience for that would not just be the school board, but ought to be our staff development committee, which would exactly. be convened in September. Right. In September. I also, I'm, I, do, I have a prejudice about wanting, just like when telemarketers call me, I say, if you want to send me something in writing, I'd be happy to read it. But I always like to see things in writing. There isn't like a, a standard kind of workshop that they're giving here. It's totally they, tailored to. Mm, yes. It would be tailored to the, to the particular needs of Cape Elizabeth. It, it seems like we need this, we need, um, have a chance to talk with the staff um, about the best use of their staff development time or whether it's offered on a volunteer, you know, whether the staff volunteer to do it or whether we designate it an actual staff development day in the calendar to it or at this point. Yeah. And I just want to, you know, support all the work you've been doing. It's been great. And I did, um, go to the second meeting of the results and have read the things. Um, my concern is to make this effective with the staff, the staff need to buy into it. 
and that's why I think we're saying we need to present it to that staff development committee. We just have three days during the whole year that the whole groups of teachers are available to meet either cross grade level or between K-12, um, and I know they value that time incredibly. I was wondering if when we present this to the staff development committee, if we could come up with a few options that are, you know, if there were, if it could be broken into two faculty meetings too, that it would happen after school or if there are other ways to do it, if it doesn't have to be just one solid day that we stay flexible. Um, a, a staff development day just to have the teaching staff at school is $33,000. And if we um, dedicate one full day to this, it is a huge commitment on the uh, side of the school board. And not that we're not willing to make that, we just might want to look at a, a number of ways that we could deliver the same information. Um, Tom holds regular faculty meetings at um, Pond Cove, and they're also at the middle school and high school. There may be a way to do this in other ways than a full day. But we need to get the buy-in of the teachers, too, which is why the staff development committee is probably the place to begin. Yeah, they felt that they would need, um, they really would need an entire day's worth of time for this to be effective. Um, and I would be concerned that if you started to break it up into smaller pieces that, well, $33,000 is a lot of money, but it's, it may become in some ways less cost effective and effective overall. And I also have concerns about it being voluntary. I mean, we talked about, about even when we presented the information to the freshman class, we had some discussions about um, making it voluntary after school experience for the freshmen and um, decided that they would not be likely to come if it was voluntary and that our message would be would be passed along more effectively if it was, um, yeah. you know, a required thing. And I, my sense would be the same thing with yeah. the teachers. Yeah, faculty meetings are certainly not voluntary. They are required, but we need to think about the broken yeah. up piece. And I appreciate that you're, that the time for staff development is woefully small. Um, yeah. So we ask for your consideration and perhaps an opportunity to make a presentation that would convince you it's of, of enough importance to consider. Great. George. Just, um, and I, I also appreciate the work and, and, and think that it, uh, the asset survey and the results provide a nice framework for community and schools and family to, to really um, uh, put some of these efforts together and really make an impact. Um, Beth brings up the cost, which is significant. Um, I guess I would just encourage you to, to look at an alternative. I, I almost um, feel that um, not to look at a, an alternative or not to encourage you to look at an alternative um, uh, would be a disservice to you. There are only three days. There are many, many things that need to be done. And, and, it's, and you're right, it's, it's woefully inadequate as it is. Uh, the job of teaching is, is changing all the time and, and that is such valuable time um, that I, I, I think that it would be um, uh, best preparation to look at what might be an alternative to a full day and a full paid day? Well, we, we um, one idea is, is just as a start for over the summer is we did make um, a couple of copies available of that report, um, which has a lot of background information as well as just the results of the, the, the survey itself, uh, to each school office. And so I, my suggestion would be to encourage um, uh, those copies to be uh, reproduced and, and distributed, um, you know, made available to staff so that they can um, have an opportunity to familiarize themselves with that over the summer break. Yes. And first of all, I'd like to thank you and Paul Gaspar for the extraordinary amount of time that you've spent on this and your persistence despite any number of ob obstacles that were thrown in front of you. Uh, during this process. Uh, to the board, I would address the question, can we at a minimum commit that we will, in fact, invite Ann and Ed Forbish to address the staff development committee and move on from there? With, with um, some of the, uh, the feelings that are, uh, are being expressed, I think uh, only to uh, um, support the effort, but support it realistically, given, given the limitation of the staff development days. Right. 
Do we need a motion on that? No. Thank you. It's, it's, Thank it's you. a request that we can send on to, we as the board have consensus to send it on to the staff development committee. They will be meeting in September. So any, any kind of information that you feel is relevant, if you could get, it, get that to the superintendent. Okay. Thank you. Ian? I, I just want to say you are incredibly eloquent on this subject. And don't please, I please don't um, take this as, uh, as a downer. Um, I think we need to, you know, continue to work with you and um, staff and the rest of the community. But keep pushing. Keep, keep pushing. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. And our final item is um, the computer lease and Keith. Well, I, I, I guess I don't have to read this whole thing. I, I move we accept the computer lease that under pursuant to the provisions of Title 20-A MRSA Sections 1001 and 1055, the Superintendent of Schools being hereby is authorized to execute and deliver a tax-exempt lease purchase agreement with People's Heritage Leasing Corp in the name and on behalf of the Town of Cape Elizabeth by and through its school committee, the issuer for computer equipment with an aggregate purchase price of $117,000. $873. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And may I have a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of discussing and negotiation of issues? Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. 